Here's Nick again. See how firm his wrist is and how low he bends. For a slightly deeper service, you may wish to use a volley. Have your weight moving into the shot, not falling away, and take the ball at head height. Taking it early means that you can hit down on the ball, and you will give it some side spin so that it curls into the opposite corner. Keep your wrist firm. See how this volleyed return curves in flight. Rob Fay gives us a five second lesson and puts it into practice as befits a world champion. Chris Bray lets the ball drop slightly lower and then drives it into the dead on. Deeper serves may be played as back wall shots. If they are slow, they can be attacked with cut. Here's Lockie Ducar beating a short chase. Spike Wilcox giving us a good example and then moving into perfect position. If the serve is hard and deep, then a force is a good reply. Crouch low, bring your racket back early, and take a large step down the court. Finish on balance, and with your racket pointing towards your target, A vertical arc produces errors in height, which are serious. A horizontal arc is better. This results in variations in direction, which are less damaging. Jonathan Howe, one of the great forces of our time. What a great finishing position for the force. Peter Patterson, demonstrating the boasted force. Into the dead on, off the main wall. Much more difficult for the server to defend. Lockie once again, returning with a powerful boasted force. And then playing a contrasting rest of touch, cut and placement. See how he controls the racket head after contact. Mark Eagle, finishing a rest with a successful boasted fall. The force for the grill is usually more controlled and less powerful. Jono shows us some grill forces that glance off the main wall, past the timbre. The stroke, and the result. Let's move on now to volume. Here's Nick. The essentials are to turn sideways, step down the court to meet the ball, have a firm grip and a firm wrist, keep the racket head well above the hand, even if this means crouching down, extend your arm towards the ball, and use a short punching stroke.
It's the same for the back end. See how firm Nick's wrist is? And how far forwards he reaches for the ball. Shots off the timbre are tricky because they require you to hit across the line of the ball. Move your feet. Watch the ball. Stay low and keep your swing compact. Left-handers face a different set of problems from right-handers at tennis, especially at the hazard end. They don't have the usual range of shot that a right-hander has when returning serve, but they tend to be more powerful in the grill corner and when serving. Starting with the railroad service, the world's top two left-handers show how smooth and simple it can be. This is Sue Haswell. And here's the effect of her railroad. And this is Steve Vagona. He throws the ball a couple of feet above his head, steps down the court, and strikes the ball with an adapted lawn tennis slice action. Look at the kick on this. Steve's drag is played with minimal body movement. It's all touch. Being left-handed, he can play the serve from closer to the gallery wall and keep it tighter. Left-handers return most serves on the back end. However, if the serve is short enough, you may be able to step inside it and hit a forehand. This is effective because it is unusual and because the ball picks up some side spin when so struck. Sue is particularly adept at volleying the serve. This is a cut volley. And here it is in match play. But she can also drive it. Here Steve plays a sound tactical rest for a lefty. He chips the return of serve and then punishes the resultant ball floating towards the timbre. The left-hander is better able to attack the inaccurate shot in this corner. Steve Ronaldson hits a force to make any volley a wince. Finally, I want to deal with doubles positioning. If the ball is in the server's forehand corner, both receivers should be back. Ben is defending the grill, and I've in the forehand corner and the timbre. If the ball is in the server's backhand corner, then Ben should move forward to cover the timbre as well as the grill. If the ball strikes the main wall in front of him, he should duck for safety and leave it to Ivan. When the ball is in the receiver's forehand corner, the galleries are not really in play, so both servers should remain at the back of the court, defending the dead-on, the largest winning opening on court. However, if the ball is in the grill corner, and if the server is a strong volleyer, it is sometimes worthwhile to defend the galleries, as Ben is doing. Ivan now has to take a more central position at the back, And that's it, folks. If in doubt, call me or consult your own professional. It's all right, Chris. I think my insurance covers it. <laughs> <laughs>